amazing stories, and unbelievable people. Ripley's Believe It or Not. Some people will try just about anything to cure an illness. And in a small Turkish village, sick people are, believe it or not, turning to the healing powers of the water snake. For years, people from around the world have been traveling to the Kirkpinar village of Baybert for this unusual treatment. Patients believe the slithering serpents have the power to draw sickness from the afflicted areas of their bodies. They claim the creatures can heal anything from sinus problems to hernias, even arthritis. Unfortunately, the doctoring serpent doesn't make house calls. In fact, people wait for hours, sometimes even days, for a single session with these healing snakes. Believe it or not. It's often said that a man's home is his castle. Well, Ripley's found a king of the beach perched on this throne 50 feet in the air. Holding 75,000 gallons of water and standing nine stories from top to bottom, this 100-year-old water tower was originally built to service steam engines traveling the California coast. But now, this unique structure has a new lease on life as, believe it or not, this man's home. 1992, it was voted the most uh, unique house in the United States. And as far as I know, it's the only water tower home in the world. But it hasn't always been the dream house it is today. After the train stopped running, the old water tower hit hard times. By the 1980s, it was in danger of being demolished. That's when a couple of architects stepped in, got the permits, and converted the tower into a home. But first, the original water tank had to be removed and placed in a parking lot. And after 18 months of conversion, it took a team of skilled engineers and a crane to lift it back into place. Then, the 3,000 square foot house was finished off with a commercial elevator, and two jacuzzis, one which is on the upper deck overlooking the ocean. Jerry Wallace, a real estate trader and former fire chief, bought the house in Seal Beach, California back in 1995 for about $800,000. I always looked at the water tower as what I would call the ultimate beach house. You have a house that's actually fun to live in, and I think the entertainment value of living in a fun house is, is worth it. Nearly every window in the water tower house is fitted with etched or stained glass. There are two master bedrooms, a maid's quarters, and four bathrooms, one of which has rotating walls. You actually come out in the hallway. The entire room completely spins around. But of course, for this kind of view, there are trade-offs, like the long climb up if the tower's elevator ever goes down, or the difficulty of installing a new kitchen appliance or bringing in new furniture. Good, keep going. But sitting in his favorite spot, the entertainment room with its 360 degree view, built in movie theater, electric blinds, and indoor fire pit, it all seems worth it. You have views, everything from the marina to the ocean. I plan on staying here until it's uh, no longer fun to live here. A local real estate agent told us that the water tower house would easily sell for about $4 million in today's market. Ripley's Legally Insane. We travel the globe in search of the most unbelievable laws on the books. Raleigh, North Carolina. Using foul language while attending a funeral could get you in trouble with the law. That's because in this town, cursing in front of a corpse is illegal. It seems a clean language clause, once imposed only on funeral workers out of respect for the dead, has recently been amended. Now, the general public must also watch their tongues while around the deceased, or else. 
Insane or not, it's the law. Jim Goldman was born with the odds against him. The doctors said he'd be nothing but a vegetable. Now, see how this amazing armless athlete is making doctors eat their words. Plus, this crazy crow's on the warpath. You won't believe the tricks he plays on people. And the amazing art making a big splash. That's because all of these women work underwater. That and much more still ahead on Ripley's. Ripley's World of Unbelievable Animals. This South American blackbird named Pepito is notorious for biting nearly everyone who passes under his guava tree. But Pepito isn't vicious or even mean-spirited. For Pepito, pecking away at people appears to be an ongoing game. Perhaps the strangest part of the story is that Pepito, a male bird, seems to only target men, respectfully sparing women and children, and mysteriously allowing them to pass untouched, believe it or not. Now, Tom Every wanted an early retirement from the salvage business. Okay, simple solution. He turned his junkyard into an art gallery. Take a look at this. There's a whole lot of junk in North Freedom, Wisconsin. But if anyone tries to throw this stuff out, they'll have to contend with Tom Every. Throw it up with! Hey, what the hell's the matter with you? Because believe it or not, this scrappy senior is turning junkyard trash into artistic sculpture. This retired salvage man is even creating the world's heaviest freestanding piece of art. I was in the demolition business. I took apart everything from the railroad era and all these things became obsolete. Now, Tom is the curator and artist in residence at the world's first scrap metal art park. With the raw material for his masterpieces coming from the dismantled components of long forgotten machines, Tom is the ultimate recycler. From insects created with old drill press machinery parts to birds made of antique trumpets and saxophones, Tom tries to put a little of his own personality into everything he does. His crowning creation, however, is the massively stunning 40-foot high, 400-ton mega work known as the Forever Tron. Constructed from hundreds of thousands of pieces of scrap metal, the Forever Tron is the world's heaviest piece of freestanding sculpture, weighing more than the world's largest jumbo jet. It's a roller coaster ride of gadgets, elevator cages, riveted tanks, and even the contamination chamber from one Apollo space rocket. Although the Forever Tron is not for sale, Tom regularly sells his other scrap metal masterpieces for thousands of dollars. Not bad for some junk someone threw away. I feel uh, very lucky and fortunate to be able to take something from nothing and, and make something out of it. Jim Goldman had a dream to play baseball. Not with the pros, but with some buddies in a regular league. Now why is Jim's dream unbelievable? Because he was born without arms. When it comes to sports, Jim Goldman loves competition. But now, this former high school star is back swinging the bat and challenging this local high-speed pitching sensation. Oh, and by the way, Jim has no arms. People first meet me and they think I'm handicapped. Sometimes they try to treat me that way and it's like, I'm not handicapped. I have to get to know me. They're like, boy, he's not handicapped. He can do anything you can do. When he was born, 
Jim's doctor said his armless condition was caused by a birth defect. And while no one could tell his parents what went wrong, doctors were quick to inform them the options for their son would be limited. The doctors wanted to put him in a state home. They said he'd be nothing but a vegetable. They told us he'd never be able to do a thing for himself. Ignoring the doctor's advice, Jim's parents were determined to give him a normal life. We, we left him do what he had wanted to do, within reason, you know. If we thought he was going to get hurt, then. But uh, everything he tackled, he just came up all right. And as he grew older, he found he could use his feet the same way other people use their hands. And by all accounts, he grew up like a normal teen. He got into mischief. He's ornery. <laughs> he, was, he was a very ornery young man. Along the way, Jim found prosthetic arms only slowed him down. Anyway, he preferred using his incredibly nimble toes instead. In this rare footage from his school days, Jim demonstrates how he could even pitch for his school's championship team. It was great to strike someone out. <laughs> Would you go to town and tell everybody you struck out against somebody that had no arms? <laughs> But sports weren't Jim's only interest. Like any other team, he looked forward to getting his driver's license. But could he handle a car without using his hands? I'd say he uh, put some dents in my pickup truck when he first started driving. Huh? But like always, Jim persevered. And today, he doesn't require any special modifications in order to drive. In fact, he's not required to even display handicap plates. But Jim's real love is sports. He's a professional bass fisherman. And Jim is famous in fishing circles for the truly amazing way in which he handles his rod and reel. You cast your hands, I cast my feet. I fish just like everybody else, except I use my feet. But competition bass tournaments are just the beginning for this outdoorsman. Unbelievably, although it involves moving targets, he's also an excellent skeet shooter. Breaking a respectable 38 out of 50 clay pigeons. And when it's too cold for outdoor activities, Jim likes to shoot a little basketball. Incredibly, he can land some amazing baskets with his foot that most people couldn't make with their two hands. And today, Jim's going through his warm-up before facing his latest challenge. He's taking the plate to face the current starting pitcher of the Wayne City Braves baseball team. Placing the bat between his neck and shoulder, Jim squares off. These fastball pitches are coming in at over 60 miles an hour. And while it takes Jim a couple pitches to get the feel, the crack of the bat tells the story. And this inspirational athlete starts sending them deep. After connecting with eight of 25 pitches, Jim calls it quits with an impressive 320 average. Never give up on life, you know, just keep going on. And and look at me, I, you know, I had a bad card right off the top of the deck, you know, so you have to learn to live, you know, and just be cool about things. Jim is a natural athlete, and he's never let his disability get in his way. In 1981, a famous local challenged Jim to a game of pool. Jim took the challenge, and he nearly came away with a victory against the legendary Minnesota fans. 